To illustrate my thesis, before I discuss it at greater length, let me just note three recent governmental activities which are clearly anti-consumer. And yet ask, where have our so-called consumer advocates been in respect of them? The three I take as illustrations, and I could take a great many others, are first of all, the recent so-called voluntary agreements negotiated by the U.S. government with Japan to limit the export to the United States of color television sets, and with Hong Kong and Taiwan to limit the export to the United States of shoes for uh, sale here. A second example is the proposal that is under consideration and that has been made by uh, uh, the administration to require that a minimum fraction of oil imported into the United States from abroad be carried in so-called American flag ships, U.S. flag ships. And a third proposal, which perhaps strikes closer to home to the people in this particular audience, is the proposal to ban uh, the, the actual action some years ago in banning cyclamates and the recent proposal to ban saccharin. Now there's nobody, nobody, literally no one, who would deny that the first two of those measures, the so-called voluntary import quotas and the oil requirements, there's no one who would deny that that's anti-consumer. The effect of restricting imports of color TV sets will be to make the prices of color TV sets higher and the quality lower. There's no conceivable way in which that can do the consumer any good. The effect of restricting the imports of shoes is to give you a, sl a smaller range of choice and to raise the price of shoes. The effect of requiring the uh, oil to be carried in ships is going to raise the cost of domestic oil by sums that have been variously estimated from $200 million to $500 million a year. Who's going to pay for that? The Arab sheiks aren't going to pay for it. The tooth fairy isn't going to pay for it. <laughs> you and I are going to pay for it as consumers. It doesn't matter whether we pay for it directly in the price of gasoline at the pump or whether we pay for it indirectly in taxes which are used to subsidize the American merchant marine. In either case, we're going to pay for it. So I say there is nobody who would deny that those two measures are anti-consumer. And yet I ask you, have you heard Ralph Nader on the subject? I haven't either. I've been listening. I've been waiting. Have you heard any other consumer advocate on the subject? Have you heard the people who have been proposing a consumer protection agency in Washington on the subject? They've all been conspicuous by their absence. Now the third item, the third item, the banning of cyclamates and the proposed ban on saccharin, some of these people would claim it's pro-consumer. But then if you ask him, whom are you protecting the consumer against, the answer is clear, himself. They are, they believe, pro-consumer, by which they mean that they are forcing you to do what you would do on your own free will if you were as sensible and as smart as they are. <laughs> the, uh, uh, after all, the argument about saccharin and cyclamate is that it carries a risk of producing cancer. I have no competence whatsoever to question the scientific evidence on that. I wouldn't try to. But obviously, the right way to handle it from a point of view of a believer in freedom is to let people know and then let them make their own choice. No objection to publishing this information, making it available, letting you know what the risks are, saying they're one in 10 million or one in 1,000, whatever, whatever may be the best evidence. Have a free press, but then the question is, ought you not to be able to make your own choice? And let me point out to you how utterly inconsistent and contradictory are the people involved in this. Uh, I'm going to come back to the FDA later because it's such a fascinating agency in general, <laughs> and for this group in particular. But let me point out how contradictory the whole attitude is. 
There is nobody who would deny, there is not a person at the FDA, there is not a person in one of these consumer agencies who would deny for a moment that the smoking of cigarettes is a far greater source of death from cancer and from other diseases than, you, than even the most extreme figures you could put on cyclamates and saccharin. If it is right, if it is correct, if it is proper public policy to protect the consumer against himself with respect to saccharin or with respect to, uh, to uh, cyclamates, the same logic says it is proper policy to prohibit the smoking of cigarettes. I refer to cigarettes, but of course you realize that the same thing is true of booze. Again, the evidence linking consumption of alcohol to human death, both directly through the effect on human health and indirectly through the effect on, rail on accidents on the highways, are far greater than any conceivable effect from saccharin or from cyclamates. Indeed, there's no doubt whatsoever that if you could effectively prohibit drinking, you would save more lives on the highway than by all of the so-called safety equipment on cars. The seat, ba seat belts, the, uh, the uh, airbags, they don't uh, hold a candle in terms of the number of lives that would be saved to the cessation of alcohol. Now, needless to say, I am not in favor of prohibition. <laughs> but I am not in favor of prohibition of alcohol. I am not in favor of prohibition of smoking. I am not in favor of the prohibition of cyclamates or saccharin. I am simply in favor of letting everybody know what the risks are and letting everybody do what he, in the fullest of his own wisdom and judgment, wishes to do. So I'm in a consistent position. But the people in the FDA, the people like Mr. Nader, are in an utterly inconsistent position. Now, truth to tell, most of them would be delighted to prohibit cigarette smoking if they thought they could get away with it. They profess to be pro-consumer, but they are only pro-consumer in words in respect to those areas where they think they got a chance of pulling the wool over the eyes of the people whom they supposedly are helping. Of course, the one conclusion I finally have come to after reading all about saccharin and cyclamates and smoking and booze is that the real thing that ought to be on every package that everybody buys, not only on cigarette packages, is the obvious truth that living is dangerous to your health. 